Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Uh, really nice to be back in front of so many uh, familiar faces. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak. 15 minutes. I did say no PowerPoint. Uh, you'll obviously see that there is at least one slide behind me. Uh, I could use a picture instead of a PowerPoint slide. But um, what's going on here? I suppose the question I ask ourselves is, why do we deploy VDI guest officer service in the first place? Anyone? Why do it? Why do organisations deploy virtual desktop? Developers. Come on. For developers? Closer to your data. Closer to your data. Accessibility. Access from anywhere. Yep. Remote working. Remote working. Hybrid working. Ease Good. Of management. Ease of management. Reduced management. Why? Because managing Windows endpoints is a pain in the ass. Yep. Security. Security, yes, because data stays in the data center, etc., etc. Good for acquisitions. Some people might argue it's more cost effective. Some will say it definitely is not more cost effective. Some people may say it's sustainable. Oh, 2009, green IT. At IGEL, our belief is very simple, which is you wouldn't want the horse pulling a car. It makes no sense. If you're going to invest time and money, in deploying VDI, deploying desktop as a service, moving all of that stuff into the data center, moving it into the cloud, because it is more secure, it's easier to manage, it's more sustainable, etc., etc. then why would you then go and deploy a Windows endpoint, which means you've then got to go and manage the Windows endpoint as well as your Citrix environment. I am full of a room, full of very intelligent technical people, and I know that we can have arguments about why we still need to deploy Windows in some cases, but I'm here really to talk to you about what IGEL's up to and how we're talking to our customers at the moment, not just about access and VDI um, and desktop as a service, but also other types of applications. Um, hands up, who's heard of IGEL Cosmos? Excellent, okay, good. So IGEL has been around for a while. I will tell you, some of you will think that IGEL is a thin client company. I'm here to tell you today that we are definitely not a thin client company. We do not manufacture or produce any hardware any longer. In fact, we've gone into partnership with LG, with HP, and with Lenovo. You can actually buy a broad range of devices from those manufacturers with IGL pre-installed. If you want a Lenovo laptop, you can actually buy an L14 laptop dash W, and it comes with Windows. And if you buy a dash I, it's gonna come with IGL. So we don't manufacture thin clients anymore. What we focus on is producing a secure operating system. The Cosmos platform is one product, one license. It's very simple to buy. You basically buy uh, the license for Cosmos and you get an operating system per device. You get a management server, which can be either on-prem or in the cloud. And then you get access to a number of cloud services that iGel host and iGel run uh, that actually sit in Azure. Why do people do it? Well, this operating system, first and foremost, is very secure. We just had a really good session earlier uh, from James on security. One of the questions was, how do we deal with internet browsers? What do we do um, around making sure that passwords aren't saved? There is nothing that can write to disk by default on this operating system. This operating system will get pen tested and gets used in some incredibly high profile, high secure environments. By default, everything on that disk is encrypted. By default, everything is read only, which means nothing can actually write to the disk. When I log on to my device, I <coughs> use single sign-on and my credentials, my Active Directory credentials are stored locally and then passed through to my AVD session and my web browser applications. When I log off that device, they disappear, unlike the Windows environment where they would stay resident. It's very, very easy to manage. I can use the management console to manage tens of thousands of devices. It is cost effective because I can also install iGel on existing endpoints. So I could take any one of your Windows Intel-based PCs right now and wipe it and put iGel on it, or I could run it live off a USB key. Because I can repurpose devices, it's incredibly sustainable. If I don't need to buy a new laptop, I actually save around 400 kilograms 
of CO2 emissions, and I can offset that. So organisations that are looking to reduce their carbon footprint are good. And we obviously have to provide rich experiences. And in a VDI and a desktop as a service world, that really means, can we get Teams and Zoom working? And anybody that was involved in 2020 trying to get Teams and Zoom running on Citrix or VMware will know it was painful. I'm pleased to say we are now in a world where you can run Teams and Zoom in virtual desktop environments, and WebEx for that matter. Um, and you can do it in AVD, and you can do it in 365, and Parallels, et cetera, et cetera. And that is because both the back-end infrastructure and the clients have moved forward. If I minimize this, I'm actually already doing my demonstration for you, because I'm currently logged on to my own Windows, uh, sorry, I was going to say Windows 365. I'm currently logged on to my own AVD desktop that I use day in, day out. So you can see my emails, you can see my teams, you can see that I've got a remote desktop connection. Something tells me that this is in the Netherlands for some reason, this AVD machine. And one of the things that you'll see is if I go into my settings and I go into my devices, you'll see that very importantly, I have got access to my camera and I've got the access to my audio. One of the things that I gel is extremely proud of is that it's worked very closely with Microsoft in developing the Linux-based AVD and Windows 365 client, meaning that we can actually do the offloading of Teams, um, offloading of audio and video in Teams and in Zoom on an AVD session. That means day by day, I can use my device, I can access my Teams, I can make my calls, I can collaborate with people. If I minimize, that remote desktop, you'll see that I actually drop back down to my iGel desktop. About 60% of iGel customers, and there's about 4 million uh, uh, employees using iGel every single day, about 60% of our customers don't actually see this desktop. They just fire up a machine, it's an invisible operating system, and it boots straight into a Citrix desktop, straight into an AVD, straight into a VMware, straight into a Parallels desktop. But what we're finding is that more and more people are actually starting to use the iGel desktop as their primary workspace. And that is because a rise of uh, SaaS-based applications as well. And so with iGel, we also ship a number of web browsers. We ship Chromium, we ship Firefox, we've got the ability to deploy Edge, we've got the ability to deploy Chrome. And that means that if I choose to, and I don't want to access my AVD desktop, I can obviously do all of my work through a web browser. Huh. No one does that, do they? They do. Charities, housing associations, lots of them now have got access to E1 or F1 office licenses because it's significantly cheaper than an, e, uh, an E3. And that means that they've got access to Office, but they can only access it through a web browser. Think about all the other applications that you've got. Bamboo HR systems, Miro boards, SharePoint, for instance. There's a huge amount of work that I do day to day that actually I can do just via a web browser. Yeah? In addition to that, though, what I might actually need is access to things like Teams and Zoom. So again, we now have got the ability to run local versions of those unified communications tools on my device. So you can see here that I've actually got Zoom now running locally and natively on an iGel device. Yes, and it's the microphone, so the recording of the people. Oh. OK, thank you. I can't sit still. <laughs> where's, the, where's the Madonna mic? Uh, All right, thank you. So, Installed locally on this device, an office of Zoom, so that I could do my calls. So I can now use my web browser. I could now use a unified communi communications tool. I've even got the ability to run Teams as a progressive web application. If any of you have looked at progressive web applications, you'll know that that is something that organizations and application vendors are working on, giving me a native experience through a cut down version of the Chromium browser. I've still obviously got the ability to go and launch my Citrix app if I, and Citrix applications if I want to, just to give you a 
an idea of what that might look like. That will allow me to log on. I can either publish a desktop or I can publish applications. And again, I can log into that. But ultimately, what I've got is an incredibly lightweight operating system, super, super secure, that's got purpose-built applications in it, allowing me to connect to RDP, Windows 365, AVD, VMware, Parallels, what have I missed, Citrix, the list can go on, but also give me access to web-based applications. All of this is now managed through a new web-based console which has got a much more application-specific uh, uh, deployment and management aspect to it. What you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen is I've got a number of devices. These are put into device groups. They may be based on my Active Directory, for instance. So I've got some customers set up here. I've got some uh, people from Microsoft. I've got some of the Global Black Belt, some of the Citrix people that are connected to this environment. But I can go into a group and I can see a number of machines. Those machines will immediately report back into this management console using a secure WebSocket. Um, we've actually changed the architecture of how the UMS talks to all of our clients, meaning it doesn't matter whether one of these clients is on-prem, behind a firewall, in an office, or whether it is working from home. But I can very easily see all of my devices that are online, and from there I can choose to either wake them up, I can remote shadow them, I can assign settings to them. You can see here the one in question that I'm using today is my uh, LG Gram, which I've... Uh, cleverly named Towns Graham, and you can see that it's obviously reporting back certain information on um, how it registered, uh, what the, for instance, CPU and the memory of that device is, but also what objects and policies that I've assigned to it. We basically take a very application-centric view of how we manage this environment. It's one of the biggest changes to hit the thin OS type of space. Historically, iGel, like many, many others, was a single piece of firmware. Small in size compared to Windows. Instead of it being 30, 40 gig, it's about 2 gig. But we've made that even smaller by making the operating system modular. And all I mean by that is if you think about how your mobile phone updates its applications, iGel does the same. I can update the operating system independently of the apps and the apps independently of the OS. Why is that important? It's important in today's world because AVD, the Citrix client, the Zoom VDI client, um, they are all updating significantly quicker than ever before. So I can take an application view of things. I can see my Azure Virtual Desktop uh, uh, application. I can see the Chromium browser, etc. I get these applications from an application portal, which is something that iGel hosts and runs. You can see here that we work very closely with our partners. We mentioned earlier that we're getting the Parallels agent brought into this application portal as well. But it allows me to go in and choose a particular application and import it into the management console. I literally click import. I say thanks very much, IGEL, for bringing me the latest version of that app. And that then appears in my UMS as an as in my management server as an application. In fact, I can go one step further. I can actually choose whether the management server automatically goes and fetches the latest version of the client. So when Microsoft come out with a new version of the AVD client, Citrix come out with a new version of the Workspace app, it's automatically pulled into the management server, ready for then to me, uh, ready for me to then deploy. So very simply in here, I've got my machine set up, as, uh, um, as you can see. I can then come into there and I can assign objects to them. So as you've seen in my environment, I've got the VMware Horizon client. I've got the Teams Progressive Web App. I've got RDP. I've enabled single sign-on. I've got the Windows 365 app, the Zoom VDI plugin, and I've got my Cosmos Hedgehog wallpaper. And you can see all of that reflected on this desktop. Very simply, if I was to make a change, I can choose whether those changes happen in real time or whether they happen at log off. So I can get rid of my wallpaper. I can come down into here and I can say, I don't want the hedgehog wallpaper anymore. I actually want, he says, 
my Manchester City wallpaper. I could have rolled out a new application at the same time. I could have rolled out a new update to that. I confirm and that will now uh, wait uh, for my client to check in. The next time my client checks in, again, over 8443, it's good, this device is gonna talk up to the web. I'll get a little notification down on the right-hand side and it will say, yep, you've got a new configuration. That could have been the latest version of an application. In this particular case, all it is is just a wallpaper update and a settings update. But very, very easy for me to apply new updates and new settings um, on the fly. The other thing I wanted to bring your attention to very quickly was another service that we've introduced, and that is called the onboarding service. And quick show of hands, who's used Microsoft Autopilot before or tried to? Okay, good. So I mentioned earlier that you can buy Agile pre-installed on a number of different devices. Most of you in the room will be very familiar with things like the HP uh, T6040, for instance. You may be familiar with some of the Lenovo range. You may have looked at one of these devices before or the LG All-in-One. All of these can ship with iGel pre-installed. But when iGel ships pre-installed, what we really want to be able to do is send that device directly to the employee, not have it come through IT. And that is what the onboarding service does. So very, very simply, we have a very intuitive uh, uh, interface that pops up when you boot up any iGel device now. Um, and this includes if you were to download the software and just trial it. It will go through, it will ask you what your keyboard layout is. It will ask you whether you accept the terms and conditions, agree to get the date and the time from your local device because we need a certificate to connect to uh, uh, the server environment. And it will then ask for the person's email address. Your email address, your email domain name that you put in, let's call it uh, you know, simon at barclaysbank.com, that will automatically talk to iGEL's onboarding service. Barclays will have already registered their management server um, with iGEL. We will then pass that off to um, uh, Barclays Active Directory. They will go through, authenticate. They might use multi-factor authentication as an example. And we will then pass this device and say, right, you need to be managed by Barclays' management server. At that point, in about three and a half to four minutes, depending on the number of applications that you're installing, it will then start to install your applications and then reboot the device and basically come up ready for someone to work. So very, very easy now to onboard a brand new device without having to bring it into IT and rebuild it in the first instance. So, we're about all day. I think I just had 15 minutes. Hopefully I've given you something to think about. Very, very secure, very easy to manage. Perfect for VDI DAS, but also non-VDI type of environments. Thank you, Neil. Oh, thanks, Thank you.